and going 76, 63 and 1 in nine seasons. It also hurts Rivera has had to work with Kyle Allen and his growing pains under center. But these types of moves are also just somewhat the nature of the business. And owner David Tepper said in part, quote, I believe this is the best decision for the long-term success of our team. I have a great deal of respect for Ron and the contributions he has made to this franchise and to this community. I wish him the best. And he went on to say he will immediately begin the search for the next head coach. And something Tepper has said since the day he arrived in Charlotte was he will not settle for mediocrity. And the way this season has gone so far makes makes sense that this move was made, right? Absolutely. It is just so funny to me that we literally had this conversation yes. yesterday. We actually asked people what they thought about this last night. We did. We had a megaphone. A lot of you at home thought the Panthers should keep Ron Rivera, thinking he was our guy. More than 700 votes. All of you voted at home. They said we should keep him. Here's how the voting broke down last night. 64% of you said no, keep him. He's our guy, guy excuse me. while well, 28% said Rivera should be gone. This team needs change. And another 9% wanted the team to decide at the end of the season, but uh, looks like people wanted him to stay, but he's out. And now that transition, hopefully getting back to the winning ways will uh, happen hopefully sooner rather than later, right? I think it'll be interesting to see because when they said Norv Turner is the assistant to the head coach right. and Norv has a lot of experience mm -hmm. and Super Bowl experience as well, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. You wonder if he'll stay next season too. Yes. I don't wonder about Cam. Cam oh, Newman, that is a big he question. was mm -hmm. a guy of Ron Rivera. Now that Ron's not here, Will they keep Cam You've got to think <clears throat> they won't make a decision anytime soon because right. they need someone to be able to make that decision, which they don't. So hopefully he stays. But I think a lot of these questions will slowly be answered probably in the off season, more so yes. than now, more later than sooner. But mm -hmm. uh, And it's interesting, before we uh, move forward, uh, the assistant head coach, or excuse me, the interim head coach, Parrot Fuel, he's been in this position before, took over coaching duties for Buffalo back in 09. So he's mm. familiar with a transition like this, and hopefully they can at least get a couple more wins. Before and he's a North Carolina wins. native, right? He is. He actually went to school in Belmont, North Carolina, right. so he has some ties to North Carolina as well. Very good. All right, well, we're rooting for the Panthers to yes, do something. Right. Mm -hmm. When would be great? When would be great? <laughs> All right, let's get you caught up on the rest of our headlines for today. Here's your four to five roundup. Gilbert County Commissioners are meeting on Thursday. On the agenda, bus driver pay. Remember a walkout was planned for 150 drivers? Well, that walkout was canceled after drivers and commissioners came up with another plan, like other bonuses and some perks. Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg and his wife Priscilla sat down with CBS News' Gail King, and they talked about their relationship. The couple said work comes home sometimes, but there's a time and place to discuss that, like no work talk on date night. And we learned things almost went sour early on when Zuckerberg told his wife, then girlfriend, that he'd rather hang out with her than finish his take home midterm. And a sad story out of Minnesota, a husband and wife died just 33 hours apart. Together they were one person. Corinne passed away first at 87 years old and Bob went next at 88. Both will be buried today. And it's winter weather preparedness week, which is ironic since a snowstorm threatened the Midwest over the Thanksgiving holiday, and the Northeast is getting slammed right now. The city of Greensboro says this week is more than about just grabbing your bread, milk, and eggs to make some French toast. Make sure you have a 72-hour kit ready for your family. And that snow hitting nope. the northeast, I got out of there just in time because I went home oh, to Boston right. for the Thanksgiving holiday. And when I saw that snow was coming in Sunday night, I said to myself, you know what, I am Gotta so go. glad I have a <laughs> 5 a.m. flight. I've never said that before, but mm. I was happy. And it's leaving New England now. It's already dumped on most yeah. of the northeast, but leaving New England as we speak. Yeah. Are we going to see anything? No, not from this, not anytime soon. No, we had some flurries in the mountains about. the other day. <laughs> Just saying. Don't bring it to the triad. That's right. We do not want it. Hey, by the way, we are monitoring your Facebook comments here. We are watching that live stream closely. So make sure you're chatting with us, interacting with us. What do you think about that weather? What do you think about the Panthers? Head coach firing a lot of news coming out this afternoon. Yes. All right, in the meantime, are you getting paid enough? That's a question we all love to hear, right? America's <laughs> workers apparently aren't. According to a study, Brooker's Institution says nearly half of American workers are in low wage jobs. So that means 44% of workers are getting $18,000 a year. When you break that down, it's about $7.25 an hour. Now, the study says the issue is there aren't enough high paying jobs. 
So we want to know who is making the least amount of money. Well, it's really across the board. The study found adults ages 25 to 54, so a large range there are in those low wage jobs. We have seen a lot of growth in downtown Greensboro in the last 10 years, but guys, the next 10 is up to you. The city wants to know what you want downtown to look like 10 years from now. Greensboro 2030 vision plan. That survey is out now and you can find it on downtowngreensboro.org. Now part of that 10 year plan will involve this guy, David Bolton, just appointed director of workforce initiatives. Now that's a committee with the Community Foundation of Greater Greensboro. His task is to bring workers to Greensboro in the next decade and part of that includes attracting people with a college degree. The goal here is for 60% of workers in Guilford County to have that degree. With Cyber Monday and Black Friday in the rear view mirror, we're looking forward to today, which is Giving Tuesday. Now, this is a day that started about six years ago as a way to give back to different charities and organizations. Uh, people are encouraged to donate. And let me tell you this, last year in the U.S. alone, we raised a record $180 million that was donated to charity. But I do want to bring things local and introduce you to a woman. Her name is Miss Jean Reeves, and she creates what is called happy duffels. She gives bags to people in need and she calls them happy duffels because they put a smile on people's faces. She gets the fabric from others donated in the community. And over the last eight years, she's made and donated thousands of bags. She's lost count, but at last check, she has 700 bags ready to go. Happening around your community, I want you to take a look inside the Stephen Tanger Center for the Performing Arts. This is in downtown Greensboro. Uh, there's a live cam where you can see what is happening inside some of the construction there. The Tanger Center is supposed to open March of 2020 and it will seat about 3,000 people. The first performance that you will want on your list, the first Broadway musical will be Carol King. That opens May 26th and the tickets actually go on sale for that on Friday. Some other events to keep in mind, we're talking Jay Leno Live. That heads to the Tanger Center in March and Patti LaBelle in April. All right, time to talk about a forecast as we head into the night and uh, into tomorrow. Hey, we're going to be a little bit chilly for tomorrow morning. It'll be similar to what we had today. We were in the low 30s this morning, in case you're wondering. Here we are, 32 degrees. We'll see some high clouds. It'll be cool in the overnight. Uh, wind's not bad, though, out of the west at 5 miles per hour. The high temperature for tomorrow goes up to uh, 56 degrees. That's a little bit better, and actually that's close to normal. That's just about where we should be for this time of the year. Uh, and when you look at the rest of the forecast, we've got sunshine on Thursday and 55 and then we've got 54 degrees as we head into Friday. Look for a 20% chance of a shower Friday. I don't think that amounts to much for your weekend though. It's sunny to partly cloudy. It is cold Saturday folks 45 degrees and then 51 on Sunday with partly cloudy skies. A little bit of rain to start next week, but at least we get warm at 58 and 64 for Monday and Tuesday. A study finds here in America that there are not enough high paying jobs. I just started a new position here and I'm happy with where I am. But Maddie, you met someone who's not happy with where they are. And some people are actually quitting their jobs because they're fed up. Right, she just did it. Just like that, Meredith Bernard, she quit her corporate job and moved back to the farm to live out the dream. So coming up after the break, I'm going to introduce you to this farm wife and why she made that life changing decision. Hey, don't forget, we want you to chat with us on uh, Facebook and YouTube on both of the WFMY News 2 accounts and on our individual accounts as well. Social media guru Brian Bennett right here. Look at him. <laughs> Got things. You have things under control? Oh, yeah. He's under awesome. Control, yeah. <laughs> He's awesome. We're going to be checking in with him. Make sure you use the hashtag. It's the, the word uh, four, the number two, the word five, four, two, five, so we can get your comments on the air. We'll be back.
take this job and shove it. Boom, boom, boom. I remember that song. Johnny Paycheck said it best, take this job and shove it. Some people have felt that way. At one point or another, you get stressed, you get a little fed up, and that's the way it goes sometimes. Yes, maybe you're working too many hours, or you can't figure out that delicate work-life balance. Yeah, so we want to get you involved in our interactive question today. So head over to WFMY.com slash vote now and answer this question. How satisfied are you with your current job? Your choices are very satisfied, somewhat satisfied, stuck with no future, <laughs> or just ready to quit. I, I hope you're not at that stuck level. Stuck with no future. I do like these, stuck with no future. That makes, I can't believe that people would even say, yes, that's me. That's got to have a positive attitude. Yeah. All right, listen, we don't want you to lie about this. You know you've had this conversation with a friend or maybe your spouse. The dream job mm -hmm. that is so good mm -hmm. that you would drop everything and walk right out of your current job. Boom, done, no notice, out the door. I asked a few folks and here's what they had to say on the streets. Oh, come on, one question. Class, they're trying to further their education. I just need a little help here. What's your dream job that you would quit everything and go for? I'm doing that right now. I am a professor at a local college. Styling like people's clothing. Honestly, probably acting. Something in Hawaii. I would just go. Doesn't matter what the job you is. You know, <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot you could put up with if you were in <laughs> Hawaii 24-7. Very true. Who is the next victim? Team job working for myself? I think it's a job I have right now with Windstream. Ah, good answer. He's managing up. <laughs> He's managing up. Maybe um, like a food blogger, international food blogger, travel all over the world. Being a lawyer, that's what we're here for. Oh, you're an Elon Law yeah, student? Yeah, <laughs> we all are. You're living the dream job. I'm in law school, so. You're the second one we've gotten all around here. Um, Everybody wants to be an attorney. <laughs> Ah, yes, many people dream of leaving it all behind and doing the dream. Well, one mom did exactly that. She switched over from work life to farm wife. Take a look. About two miles up Clarks Mill Road. I didn't grow up on a farm. I didn't even know I'd be on a farm. Just past Country Boys Market. Much less working on the farm. <laughs> and nestled against the state line. Raising kids on a farm. Is a place Meredith Bernard never thought she'd be. Never in a million years. <laughs> no. No. Six years ago, Bernard traded her corporate job, the company car, and a steady paycheck. I was the breadwinner, if you will. <laughs> for cows, a tractor, and family. My biggest why is out there are my kids. She and her husband Lawrence, who she affectionately calls the farmer, raise Angus Cross cows. It's been a blessing since she's been back. She's pretty good help not to be a farm girl. And even though she left the world behind to be on the farm, now she's sharing the farm with the world. Hey y'all, I'm Meredith, a farm wife, a mama to two, and a coffee addict. She goes by this farm wife. Six years ago, Bernard started writing vlogs. These popular videos about the highs and lows of farm work, parenting, and life came later, much to the dismay of her husband. Well, at first I thought she was digging in a blind hole, but she's doing pretty good now but the delight of her followers. I mean, you have 20, <laughs> 27,000 right. followers later. I don't know. That's it blows insane. My mind. Yeah, to me it is. That's I mean, there's certainly much, much larger channels out there. I'm still a baby in the YouTube world, <laughs> but it blows me away. I to kill two birds with one stone and bring them some hay, check them at the same time. Every day on the farm looks a little bit different behind the lens of Bernard's camera, but she says it's all genuine. Some level ground. Sorry. And that's what keeps people coming back. I think the world, people, society are just, just craving more real, mm -hmm. less Kardashian, <laughs> you know, just more real. Bernard's behind the scenes look at life on the farm is as educational as it is entertaining. They're like, but there's just something about this that's really intriguing and I'm learning and seeing things that I've never seen before. She's happy to see more agriculture channels moving in and filling the pasture size void. There's room for everybody at the table. Or as I said recently, the trough. <laughs> the story of the female farmer is changing. Over the last five years, the number of male farmers fell, while the number of women rose. Now 56% of farms have at least one female producer. For years, farms like the Bernards have become scarcer. In just five years, from 2012 to 2017, the United States lost 3% of its farms and ranches. Farming's tough. Like I told Meredith, I said, you ain't gonna never make no living. You're gonna make a life. 
The more you put into it, maybe the better life. It's tight fit, isn't it, babe? A life that may be different from most, but one this farm life thinks connects us all. I just feel like, you know, we all relate in so many ways that we don't even know a lot of times. We're all living these different lives, but in so many ways we're still connected. Well, welcome back to the four to five. Only our second day with the show, and we're already dealing with some big news. Yeah, a Charlotte. lot, Huge a news. lot going on. And we've been following your comments on Facebook and on YouTube about the firing of Panthers head coach Ron Rivera and our our uh, Brian Bennett here. <laughs> You've been monitoring the comments there, and some people really not surprised. Oh yeah, some people are happy, some people uh, not so much. Uh, Gina says, "Good coach can't blame coach for lack of players." Uh, Ethan says, "Although it turned out." this way got to respect the job he did do and Linda says I knew that <laughs> was coming uh -oh, so yeah, that doesn't surprise me I mean I knew we would have people that are really upset and some that are really happy some people like on my page were saying one person said take cam with him mm. they were really upset about it yeah and then someone else was just saying that we knew it was time we just didn't think it would happen so soon right I tell you something else that is getting mixed reaction on social media, guys. A text exchange between a bride and her friend. You just have to really see this, this one crazy. to yeah. believe it. So take a look here. We'll show you the text. A friend says, quote, I have good news and bad. The good news is that I'm going to see Elton John and I'll be in the front row on the floor. The bad news is the concert is June 20th. I think that's your wedding. Is that right? She follows up, I'm sorry, I'll send a nice gift. Well, when the bride oh. didn't respond, she sent a follow-up message. She's asking some questions, making some plans. Maybe she can stay the night. And when is the wedding really happening? Well, finally, the bride responds. She says, LOL, what? You're a bridesmaid. <laughs> She gives her some of the details and she says, I don't think it's going to work Whoa. here. Right? That's crazy to me. People ask you to be a bridesmaid. That's a big and deal. when you say yes, that is a responsibility you that you are going to be the there. calendar. You write it down. That June 20th. I, I just hope <laughs> that you, is ridiculous. she has to understand that you might have ended that friendship. Like just 
for Done. Elton John. Yes. I, I mean, I love Elton John, but to lose a friend over that, come on. Okay, but people are actually <coughs> siding with the friend. Let's really? bring digital expert Brian Bennett back in on this because you're monitoring some comments. People actually say it's Rocket Man. You can't miss Rocket Man. Yeah, uh, it's kind of crazy, right, Maddie? Uh, Carolyn says depends on whether the friend is a bridezilla Ooh, oh. or not. So oh, that's no. like, wow, that's <laughs> out. Linda says uh, a true friend would settle for seeing the movie Rocket Man and attend mm. the wedding. And uh, lastly, Sylvia says, maybe it is, she says, maybe it is the farewell tour. Need mm. to give bride advance notice though. So. <laughs> but do we know that it really is the farewell tour? Because we some of these so, yes, artists, they yes. say this is the farewell tour, this is it. And then a year later, they That's come back right. on the scene and sell more tickets. Kiss. Motley Crue yeah. have done it multiple times where yeah. they say it's over with. Well, Elton John's already been touring for a couple of months and he just added more stops to his tour. One of them go. right here. I have a feeling it's the end of the road. I think I think he's serious about this, but you can see him here if you're lucky enough to get tickets. I'm not even sure how many are left. You better check. Farewell Yellow Brick Road Tour that, of course, at the Greensboro Coliseum. It is May 23rd of 2020. Tickets are on sale and I have mine already. Just saying. What? That's bucket list for me. Okay. Is that what I'm getting for Christmas from you? Yeah. If you can get tickets. a ticket. <laughs> it's hard. It's very difficult. <laughs> All right. Well, we are going to a break right now, but the conversation does not stop. We want you to keep chatting with us on Facebook and on YouTube because we're streaming live. Make sure you're using our hashtag, Word4, number two, Word5. Brian Bennett manning the keyboard over there, checking <laughs> Look for at comments. Him. Right in. Maybe we'll read some after the break. Hello, Hi. come on down here. <laughs> we want to chat with you guys. It is time to check our inbox. So we are going to do this every day. Read some of your messages, your comments, your posts. And I'm talking the good, the bad, and sometimes the ugly. Ugh, but today it's all good. We're hearing from our biggest fans in today's inbox. 
our moms, guys. Yeah, they wrote in yesterday. We'll start with my mom. She sent me these texts before our first show started yesterday. She said, keep killing it. Love you. She even made a sign I love it. <laughs> that said, we're watching the four to five. She was watching with my grandma. So thanks, mom, for your support always. Tasha, we heard from your mama. Yeah, she sent me this message saying, oh. I will be watching. Oh. She was actually at work, so she had to put the volume a little low so oh, that people could hear yes. what she was watching. But I always, always love Love having my number one fan. Very watching. cool, very cool. Yeah. My mother-in-law actually chimed in from uh, Florida. She lives near Orlando and she wrote, enjoying your new show in Orlando. And she sent her picture there, her avatar now is her with my two youngest oh, right there. So cuties. that's Susan Pruitt, yeah. All right, so our director, Brett, also got a few messages from his family. His twin sister said, good job. His dad sent his congratulations and his mom is so incredibly proud of him. And uh, Brett, we are too. We're gonna put you on TV. There he Brett. is, hey. woo! Hey, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for putting us on television. That's Brett Favre is what we call him. <laughs> or Buttons. Buttons, or that's buttons. right. He's really good at it. Yeah. His, his <laughs> new nickname for you. Yeah, that's very we cool. I'm glad that, uh, and, and Brett, by the way, is the biggest, the biggest a Green Bay fan you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> he was literally named for Brett Favre. Oh. Right? That's why I call him Brett Favre. Yes. Okay. Just side trivia for you. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, so keep sending us your messages and your comments. We are on Facebook and we are live on YouTube. You could see them when we check our inbox. Yeah. That's the way it works. Them. We'll be back. On your toes. Hey, ice cold milk and an Oreo cookie, they forever go together. Welcome back. We have breaking news for you this half hour. In case you're just tuning in, Ron Rivera fired as the head coach for the Carolina Panthers. Owner David Tepper made this announcement about an hour ago, and we want to know how you feel about this decision. I think a lot of people were a little surprised. Yeah, well, are you happy, surprised, or are you mad? Those are your options today in our poll. Yeah, so head over to WFMY.com slash vote now to weigh in, or you can use your free WFMY News 2 app. All right, so interim coach Perry Fuel, he was the secondary coach for the Panthers. Now he moves into the top spot for a while till they make final decisions. 
Offensive coordinator North Turner becomes special assistant to the head coach and quarterbacks coach Scott Turner now becomes offensive coordinator. So all of this, of course, comes after that rough Panthers loss to the Redskins on Sunday. The score to that game was 29-21, but the Panthers are 5-7 and seven overall this season. Owner David Tepper released a statement saying, quote, I have a great deal of respect for Ron and the contributions he has made to the franchise and to this community. Tepper also said our vision is to find the right mix of old school discipline and toughness with a modern and innovative process. Yeah, make sure you stay with us throughout the evening. We'll have developing details on this uh, as they come in. I'm sure lots of folks mm -hmm. commenting about this. Our social media expert, Brian Bennett, standing by. And boy, uh, people are all over the place <laughs> with this one, Brian. Absolutely. Say it ain't so, say it ain't so. The Panthers have let Rivera go, my Ooh. goodness. Uh, I can't believe it myself. Bobby says the dysfunctional saga of the team continues. Uh, Caitlin says, I think this was needed. We need a big shakeup. Uh, also, uh, Miss Knight says, just wow. Uh, we go to Marsha who says, finally. And Janice says, wow, it really needed to be Cam, as in Cam Newton. So there you have it. Uh, people are chiming in, Eric. Yeah, I'm, the people are on both sides of this. We even saw our, our poll there. A lot of people, it's literally 50-50 mm -hmm. right now, whether they agree or disagree with this. A lot of people knew it was coming. Don't think they thought it would be this quick. Yeah, 5-7, not good. So hopefully yeah. with the change, we'll see if that will make a change. Maybe it will be 6-7, 7-7. Yeah. Seven, seven. You we'll know, see. I think Ron will be okay. The river boat will stay afloat with this one. I think yep. he'll find another job. Just won't be here. Somebody will pick him up quick. All right, let's get you caught up this afternoon, and we are going to begin here in Wilkes County. A mom there says her son was only trying to help a driver when he was shot. Sarah Brondo says her son Gibson thought the driver in front of him needed some help when he slowed down and he put his blinker on. But instead, the family says that person shot Gibson twice and hit him in the back. This happened on Black Friday. The family says Gibson was coming home from Walmart. They're now offering a $1,000 reward for help finding the person responsible. An unexpected announcement this morning concerning the 2020 election. Senator Kamala Harris just dropped out of the presidential race. She told supporters in an email that she did not have enough money to fully finance a competitive campaign. And another school shooting in Wisconsin. Police say an armed student confronted a school resource officer at Oshkosh West High School, and that led to an officer-involved shooting. Both the student and the officer were hurt. The school was evacuated, but this comes just a day after an officer shot an armed student at another high school in Wisconsin. That one at just about 80 miles away. The student gunman involved in that shooting was also hurt. Well, bus drivers in Guilford County may just get those raises you've been hearing a lot about. The same raises they were going to walk out over two weeks ago. Guilford County Board of Commissioners, they have a meeting coming up on Thursday. And the agenda for that meeting shows the board is going to talk about reallocation of unexpected funds to pay those bus drivers more. That walkout, by the way, it never happened. The drivers actually reached an agreement with the district and the county, but that agreement did not include any raises. Saving special needs animals. This will put a smile on your face. Ziggy's Refuge Farm Sanctuary in Providence, North Carolina. They take in animals who need some extra love, like this piglet. You'll see her. Her name is Hope, and she has disabled legs. So the farm says that they're seeing major progress with Hope. Look at her getting around there. Now, they thought she might be paralyzed, but you can see she is up. She is moving around, and she is using those back legs. If that doesn't put a smile on your face, I really don't know what will. But in a time when arts are being cut in school, a Greensboro woman is making it her mission to introduce dance to some kids who may never be able to express themselves in that way in a dance class setting. Her program is called the Dancing Dreamers, and thanks to a big grant from the state, her vision is growing. I believe that dance is an opportunity for children to really let go of things that may have them bound. Princess Johnson is passionate about dance. She opened Royal Expression School of Dance in Greensboro 10 years ago, but more recently created a program to give back to the community. What we're doing is very different. Dancing Dreamers is a 12-week outreach program that's built around movement and dreams for kids ages 9 to 14. So it's just really giving them a chance to literally feel themselves being something different than what they ever imagined. 
The program started as a pilot back in 2018, but will continue after getting a $5,000 grant from the North Carolina Arts Council. Just receiving a grant from the state is very competitive. Johnson says her program is all about helping the kids develop self-confidence and belief in their dreams. Dig deeper and really think very positively about themselves. The curriculum goes beyond just dance. The children are motivated to both write and speak. I have everything I need to succeed. And at the end of the 12 weeks, the kids perform a routine they choreographed. So it's, it's really cool to see their confidence levels go up. Johnson says by having the kids visualize their dreams through the form of dance, it makes the impossible seem possible. So the grant money that she's getting will help facilitate two sessions come next February. And when you just see the smiles on these kids' faces, it really just makes it all worth it. And it's one thing she was talking about embodying your dream. You visualize it inside and outside and you literally make a move visualizing mm. what you want to be when you grew up. That's what those kids are doing. I, just, I love the fact that, I, mean, I hate the fact that arts are being cut all right. over the place. I love the fact that people are making a difference and really going to the extra mile and saying, you know what, I'm gonna do what it takes to get some sort of a program available. Right, and then you said those grants are pretty difficult to get. Right, and $5,000 doesn't seem like a lot of money, but for a program that is basically funded from the community, $5,000 can really make a difference and those grants can really range from five to ten so whatever they're able to get is really great That's and that great. money going right back into we the need community. To keep tabs on those kids. Really yes we do. Professional dancers Superstars. Yeah. You never know. You never know. What we do know about is the forecast. I can tell you about this. We are looking at uh, temperatures as you head into the night and really this is tomorrow morning so technically we hit our overnight lows mm, six or seven o'clock in the morning thereabouts but we'll bottom out tomorrow morning at about the freezing mark. Look for partly cloudy skies and we're thinking that temperatures will get back up to the mid 50s. That's just about where we should be, by the way, this time of the year. And you look at the long range outlook, we'll stay in the mid 50s. Look at the average high is 54. So we stay within a degree or two of that. That'll be for uh, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. The only difference is Friday. We have a slight rain chance, more sunshine this weekend, but colder at 45 and 51 and then some rain 50% Monday, Tuesday, 58 Monday and a warm 64 degrees by Tuesday. 64 sounds like a heat wave, Maddie Gardner, as we <laughs> head into next week. Okay, so what if I told you that all that cold and wet weather, it was causing a French fry shortage? Boo. What? Let's go over here to digital expert Brian Bennett. Where are the French fries going? What are people saying about this? Oh my this? goodness, Miss Williams says, kill me now. She oh, can't no. take it. <laughs> we won't. <laughs> um, also, we got another comment. Let's see. Uh, Cheryl, Cheryl says, I'd buy a bag of potatoes and just make my own problem oh, solved. So. Make your own potatoes. Right. Okay, well, that might be an issue because the reason there's a French fry shortage is because there's a potato shortage. Let's talk about it a little bit more. So farmers in Minnesota and North Dakota, they've struggled to harvest those potatoes this year, and some potato producers are <coughs> even trying to buy potatoes from other continents. Experts are predicting domestic potato output to be at its lowest level since 2010. French fry demand is so high right now, the supply just can't keep up with the demand. So to make all of this worse, the potatoes that are harvested, they are too small to make French fries. Good luck. Goodness, they look delicious. So. <laughs> we hate that. All right, issue across the triad right now, porch pirates stealing uh, people's packages from their homes. A Trinity woman spreading Christmas cheer by returning packages. Heather Heath says dozens of packages delivered to her door by mistake, so she put a sign up in her yard asking delivery drivers to check the address. She says this happens over three over a three week time frame. I stack them on the kitchen table and so about five o'clock um, I go out and deliver the packages when the neighbors are home um, and I just put them up at their front porch. So if they see me on their doorbell, you know, they know I'm who I am. And we reached out to Amazon. Amazon says they are right now looking into this. Okay, this monitor is mirroring my phone right now. And what do I have? Oh, all the emails from Black Friday and Cyber Monday. All the emails. No. You know what? You are not alone. 
In fact, you have someone who has been talking about it, Maddie Gardner. I'm so over the email. <laughs> She's right. sick of it. <laughs> I know. Okay, okay, so now the answer is unsubscribing, mm -hmm. okay? So do you have time to go through and delete each email no. one no, by one no. by one? No. You don't, right? Right, which is why I have a trick to make it go a whole lot faster. It all starts with opening up your email. You know what this looks like, right? Typing a specific word into the search bar. I'm going to have a step-by-step <coughs> step of how to clear the clutter in your inbox. Box. It's at 5.58 today. Okay. All right. Now, this next question is a little personal. It's for you. Okay. I mean, I don't want you guys to get offended, and okay. I don't want you people to laugh at home. What brand of makeup do you use? What do I use? That would be, <laughs> I'm not even sure. That's, uh, I think it's Revlon. Revlon. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Yes, Revlon. Okay. So, what we're talking about is high-end name versus kind of drugstore. Okay. So, you have this high-end lipstick. Uh, I mean, this low-end lipstick, it's five bucks. The high-end lipstick is $20. What? Oh, wow. Okay, I want so the $5 one. you want the $5 yeah. one, but does it perform as good as the high-end one? Interesting. Two what? wants to know at 510, we're going to be showing you makeovers, half of a face with one side, half of the face oh. with the other, and see what you think. Okay, here's the last thing I want to talk to you about. The last thing is this. It's a purchase that you will make that is called the Stovetop Fire Stop. And if you purchase this, it is the best purchase you're going to make because it's going to stop a fire on your stove in a matter of seconds. You don't get burned trying to stop the flames, and the house does not get burned down. We're going to tell you where to find it and how it works and show you how it works tonight on Two Wants to Know. All right, well, it is time for that Christmas shopping. And when I say hottest toys of the year, what do you think of? Probably the items you're seeing on your screen. But coming up, we're going to tell you why parents are trying to get their kids to play with traditional toys and not electronics and what may be under the tree this Christmas. That's when the four to five returns. Keep chatting with us on Facebook and on YouTube. We'll check your comments.
Hey, welcome back to the Fortify. Thank you so much for watching, not only on TV, but on the internet, Facebook and YouTube, streaming right now. Yeah, we got a lot of viewers tuning in and we thank you for doing that. But we've been asking you some questions about your dream job and what would you just quit your job for and start doing that? And you've been getting some great comments, Brian. Oh yeah, uh, Betty says, rocking babies in a hospital nursery. Uh, so. That I is so that. cute. This seems relaxing. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Joy says, Retirement, and then she put like heart emojis and everything <laughs> like that. That sounds cool too. And uh, we might have to call Tim Buckley on this one because Myra says meteorologist. It's always been a dream of Ooh. mine, but I ended up doing accounting instead. That's still money. She's That's still money. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We can also ask Eric Chilton right. what he thinks about maybe adding another meteorologist. Hey, more the merrier. That's the way I look at it. We could always use help on that front. Hey, let's talk about something that I love. That would be food. Cheesecake, one of the most popular desserts of the holidays. But if you've ever tried this at home, it can be a nightmare. It's really difficult. Who better to get us through the pain to the pleasure than the folks at Cheesecakes by Alex. I'm like a little kid just like it's like it's Christmas. So Tim, what are the three things that people need to know if they're trying to make cheesecake at home? One, temperature. Everyone tends to think that you need to bake a cheesecake at a traditional temperature, 325, 350. Think of it like barbecue, like we said in the kitchen, low and slow. We bake ours at 200, but I think anything in that 200 to 275 degree range works. Moisture in the oven is a huge part of it. Everyone complains about their cheesecakes cracking. They don't know how to solve that problem. Temperature is another part of that if you overcook it, but also moisture. You can throw a sheet pan in the bottom of the oven, a small pot full of water, whatever you can uh, put in there that's not going to burn. And then the third thing I would just say is the mixing. You just kind of give it the eye test here. You don't really want to over mix it because the more you mix it, the thinner the batter gets. But you can also over mix it and that's going to cause your cheesecake to stick to the pan. Uh, if you're going to suspend chips or a sauce or something in your batter, uh, it's going to sink to the bottom. So if you thought for one second that I would end this segment without eating, you have lost your mind. Happy holidays. Oh man. I think you liked it. I'm telling you. I could, that was one of those when Manning, our photographer, who by the way, we love him dearly, uh, was laughing while he was shooting because I couldn't know what else to say. It was so good, so good. All bronzing. You know, I, I've never made a cheesecake before. I tried once once. But now I got some tips. Yes. Delicate balance. You did okay. bring some back. I did. I will tell you real quick, the, the key, put a, put a pan like a, a cookie sheet that has uh -huh. an edge on it with water in the bottom of the oven mm. to keep the moisture it's in there. It's called a bain marie. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's right. I watch All a lot right. of cooking shows. <laughs> well, you can buy some cheesecakes or maybe you can buy some toys for your kids because it is the holiday season. And get this, the toy industry is suffering at the hands of technology. The toy market doesn't have that hot toy. You remember like Tickle Me Elmo or the Cabbage <laughs> Patch Kids anymore? Parents want their kids to play with traditional toys instead of electronics. And the reason for that, they want their kids to unplug. Adobe Digital Inside says these are the hot toys for the year. You have the Owlies, that's a toy owl that flies. Bloom dolls that grow when you add water. This one I really like. Candy Locks dolls with scented hair. Hmm. The LOL Surprise Fashion Doll. I wonder what the surprise is. <laughs> and Kidney Kindney Kids, another kind of doll. I don't know exactly how it's pronounced. Kidney Kindney? I don't know kind, that one. Kid, I don't know. I don't have dolls. kids, so I need someone to help me out. <laughs> I'll hook you up. Well, you might recognize some items on this Christmas list. This Christmas list takes the cake. I can't get over it. A dad posted it. It's his 10-year-old daughter's, and she said in the tweet, my daughter must be out of her mind. It went viral. If you take a closer <laughs> look, it includes an iPhone 11, AirPods, a Chanel purse, a Hydro Flask, a Live Bunny, essential oils, clothes for that bunny, and $4,000 in cash. Now, we added all of this up. Dad, it's eight thousand dollars. Hope you've been saving. You better get mama high her Gucci maintenance. Slides. High Come maintenance. On. All right, the hype of AirPods, of course, when they were released, that they were wireless. That's what everybody mm -hmm. wanted. Wall Street analysts estimated Apple would sell between ten and twelve billion. That's billion with a B dollars in AirPods just this year because people keep losing them. Well, now stores are selling an AirPod carrying strap. This is Nordstrom, at least. It's around the neck string that helps you keep up with the AirPods. Now you just went back to being wired. Uh, you can get this at Nordstrom for sixty dollars. Walmart, we hear, sells a different variety for about. 
about eight bucks. This is genius. Force people to get the AirPods because you have the lightning port and now, now make a string to connect it. I can't even Here, I got an it. idea for you. It's free 99. Mm -hmm. Just get some string and put it around and yes. boom. Or get go. traditional headphones. The way it should. No, but that, that's what it is. You just went in a circle, right? right? I you, mean, yeah. Well, you want to have options here. You have the option of having the AirPod and then you have the strings that's true, to that's attach. True. Because okay. I don't really want to deal with actual strings. They this need to come no with the AirPods. That's what I There think. you go. Apple should do that. Okay. Well, teach is on. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'll say about that. That's the way it works. All right, we're going to take a short break. Don't forget, hashtag 425. That's the word for number two, word five. We'll be back. Hi there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hi, thank you. Let's take a look at our seven day forecast heading into the night tonight. 32 degrees. You'll hit that overnight low tomorrow morning. Tomorrow will be a little bit breezy on the back side of the front that moved by the other day. So 56 degrees. We're in the mid 50s for Thursday, Friday with some sunshine Thursday. Slight rain chance Friday. Your weekend sunshine and chilly Saturday at 45. Sunday 51 with a mix of sun and clouds. Coming up on WFMY News 2 at 5, more than half of holiday shoppers are willing to go into debt to spread Christmas cheer. We'll take a look at what they're spending their money on and whether or not shoppers have a backup plan. Plus, Greensboro businesswoman Kathy Manning hopes the second time's a charm. She announced her second congressional bid, why she thinks she is the fit for the sixth congressional district seat. That's coming up at 5.
Hello, mic check, one, two, three. Hi, one, two, three, four, five. Correct. Yes. Yes. Mic check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mic check. One, two, three. Mic check. I'm right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Can you hear me? One, two, three. I'll go to NRM right now. Hey, ice cold milk and an Oreo cookie. They forever go together. And like you guys know this rundown like the back of your hand yeah. and Cause like because it's your baby no yeah. it's like but that's important like it you is. this is what you hello you got I didn't hear you guys talking in my ear um, now I can hear you. Now I can hear you. Uh, looks like losing to the Redskins has serious consequences as Ron Rivera is now out. So this is the segment we call My Two Cents. Basically, it's a time for us to pick a topic and chat a little bit about it. So get this, apparently a man in Florida is suing Madonna for changing the start time of her concert. It was originally at 8.30 p.m., now it's 10.30. Now this gentleman alleges that that change is a breach of contract between the singer and the buyer. And he says that change has devalued the tickets, making them more difficult to resell. Now, I'm not taking sides here. Is it just me, or does this make you think that, as a society, we must be so crazy? Take this case, his name is Richard Harris. According to LegalZoom.com, he sued Anheuser-Busch for $10,000 for false advertising. He said that after drinking the beer, he did not have the luck with the ladies, as the ads claimed, and sometimes he got sick after drinking too much. The case was thrown out of court, but you know what? It went. It took up time in the court system. So I'm not passing any judgment on these cases, but it makes you ask the question, where do we draw the line? Now, there's a nonprofit that works to improve the civil justice system, and they reported that the so-called frivolous lawsuits account for $264 billion in the U.S. Billion dollars. It makes you think, when will we get back to using the courts for justice and not for greed? You do your own research, formulate your own opinion. That's just my two cents. And that is your four to five. WFMY News 2 at 5 starts now. We begin with breaking news out of Charlotte, where the Carolina Panthers have parted ways with head coach Ron Rivera. This news comes just days after the team's fourth loss in a row. Before we get to the details, we want to know how do you feel about the Panthers firing Ron Rivera? Weigh in on our free updated app. While you vote, WFMY News 2's Luke Lidden breaks down the shakeup. <laughs> 